morning. Welcome back. So before we get started, I'm gonna take a, just a second to talk about diversity. I got my start in tech. My first tech job ever was at a Baltimore company called Stack. And I, had, I went to a Ruby apprentice program, and that's my first tech job. And then, a year ago, the first tech conference I ever went to was Closure West on their Opportunity Grant. And now here, another year later, I'm on stage. So if you... <laughs> So if you have the chance at your company to sponsor mentorship, apprenticeships, scholarships, please do so. They make a difference. It's not perfect, but it helps. So the title of this talk is Web Development is Distributed Systems Programming. So distributed systems, right? They're hard. They're complex. They're like infinitely complex like a pit of despair of complexity and just nodes failing and ugh, nasty stuff. But not web development, right? Web dev's easy. It's a solved problem. You got your monolith, you just configure it however you want. Someone else has made all the decisions for you. It's done. So web devs just write glue code, right? That's one I've heard a lot. Web dev isn't real programming. We're done. There's no more work to be done in web development. <laughs> Hi, I'm Michaela Patella. This is me. You can find me here. I'm a senior software engineer at Yet Analytics. And we have distributed systems. We have tables, we have queues, we have web apps. Now, a huge part of my job is web development, but I don't call myself a web developer anymore. It's how I got my start in the industry. But anybody else here consider themselves web devs? Like, I know it's early, but hands. All right. It's a few, fewer than I thought. People are hesitating. <laughs> but we've seen these biases against web development firsthand, right? They're encoded in our companies. If you compare salaries for web developers to people who call themselves software engineers, there's a massive difference. Now, this is one of those really deep problems in tech that we're gonna figure out one day. So, how many web devs are there? If you look at the salary samples, it's pretty significantly smaller than people who call themselves software engineers. What about distributed systems engineers? There's 25 samples, on this site at least. So it's this small emerging field, maybe a specialty. So considering there's nobody here to stop us, let's take on this role ourselves. Let's take up the mantle of distributed systems engineers. Let's use the perspective of distributed systems on our web applications. And we're gonna look at the history of web apps. And we're gonna apply the same kind of rigor and respect that you would expect a distributed systems engineer to apply to a web system. Because web dev is changing. This field's about as old as I am. And it's getting more complex over time. We have these forces at play here that are just pulling our systems apart. And we're creating new systems in the middle to deal with this, with new complexities and new powers. So. How do we deal with complexity as software engineers? Well, we name things. So part one, web dev can not not be distributed systems programming. <laughs> so what's a system? Kyle Kingsbury in his Jepson series calls a system anything you can draw a box around. And that box separates the system, these behaviors, from their environment. And you can look at the inputs and the outputs that come from this environment and sort of characterize what goes on inside the system. So from this perspective, everything's a system. But for our purposes, we're looking at software. So what's a distributed system? Well, when you start to look it up, 
a distributed system is a network of computers. It can be any number of computers arranged in any number of ways. They all have their own processors, memories. They work concurrently. They have different clocks, usually. And a distributed system is the software that runs on these distributed networks. And the arrangement of these systems, of these networks, they matter. One node broadcasting to four is very different from four nodes broadcasting to one. So what's a web developer? Well, web devs make websites. That much has not changed. You got servers, you got clients talking back and forth. So let's zoom in on just one of these connections. You got a browser on one side and a server on the other. They talk with HTTP, Hypertext Transfer Protocol, sort of an abstraction around a file system. Most of us are familiar with it. Semantics are pretty useful. They send strings back and forth, and these strings are interpreted into the browser. Browser has a layout engine, puts it together, and you have a website. Browser sends a request, server responds. And two essential properties of web development came out of the simple era of sending strings over HTTP. We have routing, and we have templating. So with routing, the server gets a request and it can respond however it wants. It doesn't have to map to a file. The assumption is that the file exists, but you can just return whatever you want. And the template, well, the file doesn't have to exist, so if you take pieces of HTML and concat them together, you have the early version of web development, which was clever people writing scripts on their servers to put whatever content they wanted together, guided by this URL. And this made users really happy. They wanted more. They wanted apps to know more about them. They wanted to do more on the web. So the servers responded in kind. So in order to keep track of all this user state, all this app state, so that way if you just flip the switch on the server, you don't just lose everything. We had databases. And this is when things get real. Real programming, right? So TEF in Programming is Terrible, Lessons Learned from a Life Wasted, calls web apps skins around databases. And now we are definitely in the era of web apps. We don't just make websites anymore. The data comes from this back end, this distributed system. HTTP, it's not just a file system abstraction anymore. It's that messaging protocol. So here's a pretty typical setup. The browser sends a request, goes to the router, you do whatever magic you want on the back end, and you just send back the HTML. Magic can call into whatever kind of system. Client just sees the server. And those servers take many, many shapes. Say, maybe a stream processor. Batch processor? some twisted nest of business logic. We have to get input from somewhere. So it comes from our data vortex, harvested from the souls of our users. <laughs> anyway. Backends can get pretty complex. They're, they're networks in and of themselves. You can drill down to meet whatever your needs are. The client sees this consistent view from the web server. The back end, it's all the same to the client. The back end is definitely a distributed system. Is that everything? What about me, says the browser? I've been here the whole time. Even in the simplest case, when it's just a server sending a string over HTTP, the browser is doing meaningful work. It is a peer in this distributed system. And even before we added these databases and these complex backends, it's always been a distributed system. And they're full citizens, and they should be respected as such and thought of as such.
So part two, help. I can't tell my back end from my front end <laughs> and what to do about it. Short answer is embrace it, but we have a typical distributed system, right? It's changing. We're, not mo we're moving away from these monoliths. Now templating is going into the client. We have more powerful JavaScript runtimes than ever, and that same server that it existed before, well, it's not concocting these templates on the server. It's using HTML and JavaScript together as sort of this delivery system for web apps. HTML is this rocket and the JavaScript payloads at the top. There's CSS in there somewhere for styling. This is a really powerful property, though, when the client does this kind of work. It works more like the native applications we have on our phones and our computers. And they can be treated consistently. We have these beautiful APIs that send data back and forth and aren't concerned about the messy sort of client-specific details. It's the dream, at least. But the asset server still has to exist. That file system abstraction that the web is based on still has to come from some server. And it's separate from our data machinery and a lot of our web applications. And this has sort of become the accepted practice for larger businesses. But that sort of remote templating, the HTTP paradigm, the roots of web development still holds. It's kind of this quirk that sort of emerged. And this has kind of caught on. Web systems are powerful. Our native apps, every single framework you have has a web view. There's trade-offs, but in exchange for maybe performance, you get the power to upgrade at any time. It's a really good development property. But you take on complexity in exchange for this power. We have an asset server, we have this beautiful rainbow API, and there's interconnected web of servers and exchanges and there's many to many relationships on our servers. So where's the front end now? Is it the client? Is it the client server serving the assets? There's definitely a back end, right? Like data machinery, complex uh, systems. But the API has a front end too. Talks to the clients. Talks to users who want to implement it. Even our clients have back ends. They have to do meaningful work. And they definitely still have front ends. But they have state now, too. So front end and back end, these terms that we've taken with us from the origins of web development, they're contextual and they're relative. In these intricate graphs we have of our software, we have multiple back ends, multiple front ends. Every connection between the servers has this relationship. And they're passing messages back and forth and doing meaningful work under this distributed computing umbrella. And these useful domains that we have around our software, these complexities that we have about clients, about specific servers, databases, they're being compressed into these terms, front end, back end, that really don't hold anymore. They're relics of the old server paradigm. Carry with them assumptions and expectations about the work that we do that really don't hold anymore. They're fading further back. So we have this small self-contained system. Server, clients, part of a much larger whole. So, part three, I have a simple example for you. It's about a new relationship between a client and a server. Not so new. So we have a simple app state. We have an index and we have a count. It's wrapped in an atom. It's all of the semantics of closure atoms. And this app state exists on servers, on clients, and they connect with WebSockets. And WebSocket is this advancement on HTTP where people are like, we're not happy with one request, one response. There's way too much overhead. And it takes the latency down to something a lot closer to the bare metal. So, let's take a look.
We have a heartbeat here every second. The server sends the state of the world to every client that's connected. The index, the count, the entire state of the world every second. Clients can send events, and the server responds in kind. It sends the state of the world in response to the event, and if a client happens to miss that broadcast, it still has the heartbeat to get synced back up. You can have as many clients as you want, as many web sockets, max out your server, add another server. So how can an approach like this scale, right? Send the state of the world every second, it's nice for a little toy app, but can it work with real systems? Well, you can do something about taking the delta of the app state. You look at what's changed. The client sends up what it knows about the world, and then the server responds in kind. So for a new user, it knows nothing. The delta is everything. So what systems have taken this approach before? It's the foundation of networked games. Massive network games with player positions, hundreds of them, hundreds of objects in the world, all of these intricate connections and infinite shapes of these networks interacting. We see certain patterns emerge though that we're familiar with. So here's our takeaways. Web apps are always distributed. It's in the definition. You can't get away from it. Our web apps include the clients, always. And web devs, we already use distributed systems thinking in our jobs. So this is more just career advice, but if you're a web dev, just call yourself a software engineer. Demand that kind of respect from your company. It pays. So our internet is changing. It looks very similar. It's built on the technologies we know, but it's moving forward. Our work is not done. We have the largest network of computers in existence, and it is growing fast, faster than anybody can comprehend. So how will you shape it? So if anybody wants to talk about how the app works um, or just talk about, talk in general, I'll be in this room for a while. Uh, I'll probably be out in the hall too. Uh, I can finally enjoy the comp now. So <laughs> thank you for your time.